Hey, Vickers Tactical fans, Larry Vickers here, and I've got a historical failure for you today. The Bren 10. This particular one is the Bren 10 All Black Special Forces model, which was kind of their commander size format. And this is the Bren 10 Marksman Special, which was in 45 ACP. Back in the day, early 1980s, late 1970s, a couple guys out in California, Dornhouse and Dixon, hooked up with Jeff Cooper to come up with the gun that was going to replace the 1911 as the next gold standard service pistol. They used the Czech CZ-75 design, which is a double action, single action pistol that also allowed you to carry the gun in condition one, cocked and locked. As a basis, they modified the CZ-75 design, upgraded it, beefed it up, and then chambered it in 10 millimeter, which at that time was made by Norma and has since been made by a number of manufacturers a very hot and steamy round. Right off the bat, the gun got off to a bad start. They did not have a vendor that could keep up with their demands in terms of the sheet metal magazines, and they would actually ship pistols to customers without a magazine. Imagine if in this day and age with the internet era, social media, blogs, Facebook, how that would go. That would explode and go viral within one day. Ultimately, Dornhouse and Dixon went out of business and the whole project was doomed to failure. What's interesting is there's been a Bren 10 curse ever since. There was a company called Peregrine that was gonna bring out the Peregrine Falcon, which was going to be the Bren 10 rebirth. It went nowhere. It was still born right from the start. Veltor Weapon Systems worked on this because Eric Kinsel, buddy of mine, is a big Bren 10 fan. He worked on this to get it debugged and Veltor was gonna bring the Bren 10 out. As a matter of fact, they showed it at SHOT Show for a number of years. It has yet to hit the street. Unfortunately now, we're in the polymer frame era. Glocks, SIGs, HKs, other guns with polymer frame handguns in various calibers. And essentially the day of the Bren 10 is past. I'm gonna light these two up for you for historical purposes and talk you through a few of the details on the firing line. Enjoy it because it ain't ever gonna happen again. All right, I'm gonna light up the Special Forces model Bren 10. A few features about the gun. The thumb safety was designed to be reversible so you could put it on this side if you were a left-hander. However, the slide release and the mag release were not reversible. In addition, you see this little screw down here. You can engage that and that was a spring that was engaged that kept the magazine from falling out of the gun. The original CZ-75 had that feature in a different format, different execution, but it was felt from Cooper and Dornhouse and Dixon that that was a good thing to carry over, that a soldier in the field would want such that if he hit the mag release, that the magazine wouldn't drop in the grass so he could retain it. Now, adjustable rear sight for elevation and windage. Here's one thing about the gun. Had a cross bolt safety, all right? The original CZ-75s had nothing of the sort. And in order to lower the hammer from a, from a cock position, if you wanted to go back to double action, you had to squeeze the trigger and lower the hammer down. Well, they felt like in the world of lawyers that we live in the United States, that wasn't such a good idea. So you engage the cross bolt safety and now you lower the hammer and if it slipped, the gun wouldn't fire. Now, here's the problem with it. It's real easy when you go to rack the gun and chamber around to accidentally engage the cross bolt safety. So now you could actually have it engaged, put the gun on safe, put it in your holster, be carrying it around, and the gun won't fire because the cross bolt safety is engaged. That was kind of a design flaw. In the original 10 millimeter caliber with the Norm ammo, the gun had a little bit of snap to it. Like I said, higher bore line. So what's happened over time is guns like the Glock 20, which is a great gun in 10 millimeter, have kind of eclipsed this. So even if it came back, it would only be for collectors and, and other people that like the design. When you got the Glock 20 in the market, you gotta ask yourself, why would you pick one of these? But here we go, going hot.
Hey, thanks for watching the Vickers Tactical YouTube channel. To subscribe, click here. And to watch some of my favorite videos, click here. Have a good one. LAV out.